Mirrorless might be the future, but there's a certain joy and a few solid reasons to keep using a good old DSLR with optical viewfinder. I am not here to discuss them in this video though, but to make a review of the new Canon 90D. This model is a bit hard to categorize in Canon's lineup. It is an obvious step up in features from 80D as it gets a new sensor, joystick, proper 4K video and number of other improvements as well. Still, it lacks some high-end features like twin memory card slots, advanced focus configuration options and build quality on 7D Mark II level. At this point it is not clear whether there will be a 7D Mark III, but the way things are going, this might even be the last enthusiast APS-C body from Canon. So let's see what we have here. On the first contact 90D feels like any other Canon. Large body with deep and well sculpted grip. Grip is slightly deeper than the one on 80D and should feel good even for users with large hands. Controls placement is almost identical to older models with just some tiny changes. Besides twin control dials and a multiway controller, 90D gets a joystick best used to directly change focus points. All other external controls are identical to ATD. Some controls can be customized but Canon limits what can be set for each button. This is a bit disappointing in a world where competitors like Panasonic, Olympus, Sony and Fuji offer almost any feature for any physical button. I was particularly confused by joystick and multi-way controller options. You see, camera sees them as one controller and they cannot be separated. It is possible to disable them or use for focus point control only. Both of them at the same time. Why is that? For comparison, this is what can be done with joystick and multi-way controller on my Panasonic G9. Each direction can have its own function. Right now I use joystick set up for direct focus point adjustment and multi-way controller has its own settings for each direction press. Menu system is identical to other Canon cameras and that is a good thing. It is fast and well organized. This cannot be any better as it is already perfect. There is also a familiar quick menu. The same can be said for playback, fast and easy to use. Still I noticed another peculiarity. With detail settings displayed you can scroll up and down through them with the multi-way controller, while left and right browses through images. Up and down also works with joystick, but not left to right. What's up with all this joystick nonsense? LCD unit is great, 3 inches diagonal and high resolution. It is fully articulated and has touch control which works for all camera features. Focus point movement, touch shutter, playback and all menu items. This is how it should be done. Sony for example is still unable to make this work on its cameras. Optical viewfinder is nice and bright for an APS-C camera. I especially like how it displays cropping lines if you select image ratio other than the native 3x2. There is one memory card slot, not two, one. Some will scream in agony about this, others won't notice at all. Still it is UHS-2 compatible and that's a good thing. Battery is a well known LPE6N unit. Using mostly optical finder and with some chimping it provides around 1000 shots. More if you shoot in bursts, less with a lot of live view or long exposures. Connectors are on the left side, 90D has microphone input, monitoring headphones output, wired remote connector, micro USB and HDMI. USB is 2.0 only and there is no in-camera battery charging. Burst shooting with focus tracking is available at 10 frames per second with optical finder or 7 in live view mode. There is also a well known and proven silent shutter.
In live view mode there is an option to choose between fully mechanical, electronic first curtain and full electronic shutter, which of course is fully silent. In mechanical mode camera tops out at 1 8000th of a second, but in electronic goes twice that up to 1 16000th. 90D offers only one resolution for raw files. 80D had two smaller options which came in handy for when I knew I am not going to need a lot of resolution but could use flexibility of a raw file. There is a new C raw option with stronger compression to help you keep the file size down a bit. Auto ISO control is well known. ISO range can be set by its upper and lower limit. Shutter speed can be set manually or the camera can choose by itself and still you can force it to change sooner or later. Focusing system when shooting through the optical finder uses 45 focus points, all of which are cross type. There are several groupings and areas. I don't have complaints for its accuracy and speed. In live view there are four options. Spot, single point and group. There is also face and eye recognition together with face tracking. Eye recognition can be enabled or disabled and while active you can easily switch between left and right eye with joystick. Very easy to use and quite effective. It is also quite accurate. Canon really has a winner with dual pixel system. Spot metering is not linked with focus point both for optical finder and live view. As for image quality I am pleased with what I see. Familiar Canon colors are here. It is easy to work on raw files and tweak them. One thing you'll have to keep in mind though, at 32 megapixels on crop sensor high quality lenses are needed to make most out of it. Just for comparison when Canon makes full frame sensor with pixel pitch like 90D has it will have 82 megapixels. High ISO performance is solid, ISO 3200 is in most situations usable while above it depends on the scene and exposure. Compared directly with my Canon 6D for high ISO, full frame still rules. Not only there is way more noise, but the color reproduction suffers greatly. Dynamic range is quite good. Underexposing a scene by 5 stops and then lifting it in post reveals some noise, but nothing special. Also there are no weird color shifts and no bending at all. Here's a few observations regarding the new compressed raw option. On most images there will be no visible difference, but the more you push your files in post the higher the chances of something going wrong with an image will be. Problems might manifest as more noise, weaker color reproduction and worse color gradients. Here is an obvious demonstration. Notice how noise pattern looks weird on the compressed raw file. It is not random but has a certain very ugly digital artifact look. I don't know if YouTube compression will kill these details. So here's a stronger zoom to demonstrate what happens at pixel level. Pixels are grouped to allow higher compression. Memory cards and hard drives are cheap these days. There's no reason to bother using compressed RAW on this camera. Canon 90D records video in 4K resolution and finally without crop. Straight from the start I liked what I saw. Videos look great with typical vibrant Canon colors and great skin tones. Dual pixel focusing is also superb, it simply works. It is probably this combination of good out of the camera colors and dependable focus what makes Canon cameras a hit on the market. Although they don't give us advanced video options or even not the absolute best video quality, it is easy for majority of users to get great results with almost no effort. A lot of earlier reviews indicated footage is on the soft side and once I shot the same scene with my Panasonic G9 it became obvious how much of a difference there is. This is what I mean when I said 90D doesn't deliver absolute best video quality. High ISO on the other hand is excellent. With some basic adjustments like lowering the contrast 90D can deliver relatively clean results up to ISO 6400. I was especially surprised by ISO 12800 which shows noise but is still completely usable, at least for my taste. Rolling shutter is well controlled both in 4K and Full HD. Canon did a great job with this new sensor.
So to conclude, 90D has some imperfections. Video quality is slightly below leaders like G9, GH5 or X-T3 and it still lacks a lot of advanced video features like Zebra and Flat Profile. Omission of 24p video is luckily fixed by the new firmware. Joystick and button customization could have been better and there is no USB charging what is practically a standard on most modern cameras. And yet it is such a good camera which simply works. It has familiar Canon ergonomics, ease of use and finally a joystick is here. Image quality is excellent with improved dynamic range. 4K video without crop delivers great results straight out of the box. In fact, dual pixel in video mode is in my opinion still a market leader. In a way, 90D is everything that many users wanted from 80D. What is most interesting, in live view mode 90D feels and operates like any purebred mirrorless camera. It is fast and responsive with dependable dual pixel focus. If you still want a camera with the classic optical finder, 90D is a great choice. And the way things are going, it might be one of the last enthusiast level crop sensor DSLRs. That's it for this video. As always, if you have a question, that's why the comment section is here for. Consider using my affiliate links below the video to support me and if you live in Croatia, you can find both me and 90D in Anigota store where I work. Thanks for watching.